We've had some very wet conditions in Kentucky the last few years, and that leads to a number of different problems in the landscape. Two of the ones we see the most of and that I get quite a few calls about are moss and nostoc. I'll come back to nostoc in just a minute. So first, let's talk about moss. It's a very common thing that we see in a lot of different locations in the landscape. It's not a parasite. People sometimes think that I've got moss coming in, it's killing my grass. That's not the case. Moss is opportunistic. It is not tough enough to go in and kill any kind of established vegetation. The problem with moss comes up when there is no established vegetation. There are usually three reasons. One, two, or all three may be in play for why you don't have good enough grass to keep the moss from coming in. The first is sunlight. If you don't have enough sunlight, the grass just simply will not grow well and the moss will have the opportunity to come in. A good solution for that is to cut the bottom few limbs off of nearby trees. Don't top the tree, don't get carried away, but if you can just take a few bottom limbs off there, you may be surprised at just how much that helps with your moss problem. The second problem that leads to a development of moss is excess moisture. When the ground is just heavy and wet, the grass doesn't grow well. It can't fight off the moss, and the moss will come in after the grass is thinned out and died out. And then the third problem is, of course, a lack of fertilizer. Grass needs food. It has to have some fertilizer in order to grow well. So if you don't have good fertilizer levels in your soil, the grass will not do well, and then the moss will find a way to move in there in those bare areas and take over. So you can correct all of those conditions fairly easily. As I said, cut the limbs off. You can add fertilizer if needed. Moisture can be a little bit difficult. Sometimes you can do things like redirecting gutter downspouts or controlling runoff from driveways. But if you can do some things to improve drainage, that's going to go a long way toward keeping that moss from getting the chance to come in and take over where your grass isn't growing. Now, if you can't, moss is not the worst thing in the world. It at least keeps the area from becoming a mud hole. If you can't get grass going and you do have moss, it's not too bad. It's probably going to be the best you can do. Sometimes with big heavy shade trees or in spaces that are heavily shaded by buildings, you'll never be able to get the moss under control because the grass will never be strong enough to establish itself. So sometimes moss is the best solution that you've got. Now, nostoc is something a little bit different. We see this a lot after rainfall. It looks just green slime scattered out on gravel or blacktop. We see it a lot on farm roads and that kind of places. And after rainfall, it becomes very visible and we don't know what it is sometimes. When it's dry, it actually shrivels up, becomes a little less noticeable. It's a darker green color and we don't even think that much about it. The thing with nostoc is that it is heavily dependent on rainfall. It doesn't have roots like a plant. It's a bacteria actually that grows on the surfaces and then it activates basically anytime that there's enough rainfall or other moisture to support it. Now it's really hard to get rid of it altogether. You can scoop it up and get rid of it from time to time, especially when it's swollen up and all wet and slimy like that. But uh, as far as that goes, that's about all you can do. Now it's important to be careful around nostoc. It can be very slippery. So if you've had a rainfall, be aware that the nostoc may be reinflated out there, soaking up all that rainfall and presenting a real safety hazard for you. So keep an eye out for nostoc after the rainfall.